Hi there, my name is David Hillier and I'm going to give you a short video today on the dividend growth model, applying it to the valuation of equities and in particular in this video I'll be looking at how we can estimate the growth rate, that's G, and the discount rate and I'll be using the dividend growth model to do this. It has a lot of weaknesses, this approach. Uh, there are a lot of assumptions here, but it's very good just to get an understanding and an insight into uh, how we can find estimates such as the growth rate and the discount rate. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of the dividend growth model. It's uh, next year's dividend divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate. And we'll focus on the growth rate first. Now, I want you to assume, okay, so this is our first assumption, that you have a company and if you don't uh, invest any money in the company, then the earnings will just stay the same year on year. So uh, no investment, no change in earnings. And effectively, it's just a steady state situation. So the only way in which you're going to increase your earnings is if you retain some of the earnings that you generated in year. And we then take those retained earnings, we invest those, and the additional investment leads to an increase in earnings. And this is what we see here in this, this here, this formula. So let's assume that you retain nothing. Right. So if you retain nothing, you're only paying out everything in the form of dividends, then this value here is zero. And uh, that point here is zero. So the earnings next year is just equal to the earnings this year. So you have to retain some earnings. You can't pay out everything in dividends. Some of it has to be kept back. And uh, if you keep it back, you can reinvest and your earnings will grow. So let's assume that we invest 100% of the money that we make in year uh, and we, we reinvest that and get a return on that. So the dividends will be zero. That's a zero dividend company or a zero payout company. In that situation, you have the earnings this year plus you have the retained earnings, the total earnings that you've, uh, you've made in year and the return on those retained earnings. Now, if we look at that part of the equation, if the company is just reinvesting in the same business, then you would expect the return on the retained earnings uh, to be the same as the return on equity. But it may not be the case. You might find that there is a particular project that a company uh, wants to get involved in and it can generate higher returns. And we'll talk about that in a future video. But for now, let's just assume that there is a return on retained earnings and uh, it's equal to the return in equity. So the earnings next year is equal to the earnings this year plus the retained earnings for this year multiplied by the return on the retained earnings. And that's your increased earnings that you see here in the, the formula. Now let's divide each side by the earnings this year. So the earnings next year divided by the earnings this year, that is the growth rate in earnings. So we can have 1 plus G, which is a growth rate in earnings. And that is equal to the earnings this year divided by the earnings this year. So that is equal to 1, and we find that here. Plus the retained earnings this year divided by the earnings this year. So that's our retention ratio. Uh, there's the money that you keep back as a percentage of the earnings you, you generate is called the retention ratio. And the amount that you pay out in the form of dividends divided by the earnings this year is known as the payout ratio. Uh, so we've got the retention ratio here and then we multiply that retention ratio by the return on the retained earnings. And so if we subtract the one from each side, then we find out from this simple equation that the growth rate... Uh, is equal to the retention ratio multiplied by the return on the retained earnings. So you're only going to grow if you retain your uh, some of your earnings for further investment. So high growth companies will be those that keep don't pay out a lot of dividends. That's the retention ratio part. So it means they're holding back an amount and or, and slash or, 
those companies that have got a very high return when they reinvest. And it might be that there's a, a new project that they're holding money back for that's generating very high return. So two factors then affect the growth rate. The retention ratio, how much money you retain, and the return on your retained earnings. Okay, so let's look at a little example here. And this example comes from the book Corporate Finance. Um, you have a company that's just reported earnings of £2 million and it's going to retain 40% of those earnings. So that's its retention ratio. The payout ratio then is 60% because 60% of its earnings has been paid out as the form of dividends. The return on equity, the historical return on equity is 16% and that's going to continue into the future. So that's just one of our assumptions. So how much will earnings grow over the coming year? So first of all, how much is the company retaining? It earned two million and it's retaining 40%. So it's going to retain 800,000 uh, pounds. How much is the earnings going to, how much are the earnings going to increase by? Well, you've got 800,000 pounds retained and you're earning 16% on that. So you're going to increase your earnings by 128%. So what's the growth in the earnings? Well, the growth in the earnings is just 128,000 divided by 2 million, which is equal to 6.4%. Now, you could have done that directly using the formula that we introduced in the previous slide. The growth rate is equal to the retention ratio, that's 0.4, 40%, multiplied by the return on retained earnings, which is 16%. And it comes out to be the exact same of 6.4%. So that's the growth rate. Uh, let's now look at the discount rate. Where does R come from? We go back to the dividend growth model and we're going to just do a little bit of manipulation with that formula. So if you'll see here that I'm bringing up the R minus G up to the left hand side and then the P naught goes to the right hand side and it has to go as the numerator because we are uh, changing sides. So R minus G is equal to the dividend times 1 divided by P naught. So R, that's the discount rate, is equal to the dividend at time 1 divided by P naught plus G. And we actually call these two components of that formula certain names. First of all, the dividend divided by the price is known as the dividend yield. And the growth rate that comes from the returns is equal to the capital gains yield. So if you think about where uh, returns come from, we have the change in price and we also have the, the dividend yield. So the change in price, the percentage change in price is the capital gains and so therefore the growth rate is just equal to the percentage change in price. And the dividend yield, as you can see here, is just dividend at time one divided by P naught. But if we know that the growth rate is also the retention ratio multiplied by return and retained earnings, then we can say that the change in price is a function of how much money you retain. And it goes back right to the, the very beginning of this video series where I looked at how prices move in relation to the amount of dividends that you pay out. And I would advise you to go back and look at that video if you just need a bit of a refresher. So the return that an investor gets, the discount rate on the equity, is a function of two components. One, the dividend yield, and two, the capital gains yield. And the discount rate is a function of the growth rate. So the higher the growth in the company's earnings, the higher the return that an investor will expect. And let's just look at a little example here. So you've got an equity selling for 20 euros, uh, the next dividend is going to be one euro and you expect that the dividend is going to grow by 10% per annum and that's going to go on forever. So what's the return that you're going to get on this? Well, the dividend yield is just equal to the dividend divided by the price. So that's one divided by 20, which is 5%, plus the capital gains yield. That's the, the growth rate. That's equal to 10%. So the total return is going to be 15%. And you can see that it's a function of two factors, how much of the dividends you pay out and also the change in the price. So 
there are issues with this, and uh, we do need to be aware of that. The dividend growth model isn't used very often to value equities, and so, but I think it's very it's an interesting model to give you a good basis in understanding where equity valuation uh, or equity prices come from. It also gives you a fairly good estimate, so it's not the most detailed method in the world, but it does get you a ballpark figure. And as we showed in the uh, previous video. And also, in fact, on the blog post in www.david-hillier.com, um, you'll see that I've got a blog post there where I do show you how to go and use real data. But let's look at some of the problems with this. Now, the first thing is it's a model, and it's a very, very simple model. It's based on uh, three different uh, inputs. First input is the dividend next year. Now, that's fairly... Um, you, you can you can estimate that fairly uh, reasonably. Um, you've got the growth rate and you've got the discount rate. So, first of all, the growth rate is just basically an, an estimate. There are different types of growth rates uh, that we can come up with. The growth rate that we used uh, in the, the earlier slide was looking at earnings. And we looked at earnings just over a one-year period. But that could be a longer period that we're looking at. Why don't, you know... We could look at growth rates over five years or over 10 years or over three years. So, you know, there's nothing in the theory that says which period of growth rates and the dividends that you should be looking at or the earnings that you should be looking at. So therefore, it is subjective and you have to look at the case in itself uh, and the company to see which one is going to be appropriate. Now, the discount rate, as we saw in the previous slide, is based on the growth rate. So if the growth rate is not right, if you've not got a good growth rate, then your discount rate is going to be wrong. And so therefore, you're get compounding the issue. It's this idea of garbage in, garbage out. And then the final one is what happens if the growth rate is bigger than the discount rate? Well, when that happens, you're basically saying that the growth in earnings is higher uh, forever than the returns that investors are expecting, which just doesn't make sense. And in actual fact, when the growth rate is higher than the discount rate, you'll see that this model effectively breaks down. And given that the model breaks down, then anything that comes from that model, i.e. this analysis here, and also uh, other analysis that use the growth rate uh, from the dividend growth model, they'll also be wrong. So there are a lot of issues with this. Let's just, you know, it's not the the best model in the world, but it is one that you can use and uh, it's a good one to just basically give you an insight into the dynamics of prices. So very quick, thank you very much for listening and I'll see you again.